What's up guys? Welcome back to Be A Metal Fabricator. So the other day I was about to buy me a new sandbag because this one's getting pretty worn. I got these patches on it because I've busted through this thing a few times with the edge of the sheet metal on there. And I should have a sacrificial layer of leather across this thing, but I didn't. So I've had four patches on this thing and I got to thinking it would really be nice if this had a hole in it so that when you're hammering, it allows it to stretch a lot better. And then I had this great idea. What if I use a solid rubber tire? This thing could take a hell of a beating. I'm not gonna poke through it. And it's got that absence of space in here or the hole in the center that's gonna help with stretching. So the only problem with this one is it looks like this rim might be welded on here. So we're gonna cut this rim out and see if this actually works. So I'm gonna use this hole saw to try to cut this thing out of here. Let's see what happens. Now there's probably much better ways to do that, but I'm just gonna chisel the rest of this out of here. So now that I got the rim off, let's run a few tests on here. I'm gonna go ahead and stretch in this section on the sandbag, and then we'll move over to the rubber tire and see the difference. Okay, now obviously this works really good because they've been using these things for who knows how long. I mean, this is like a staple to metal shaping. This is something every metal shaper has in their shop. So now that we see how good that stretched, let's try the rubber tire. So what's happening here is it, it's the spontaneous tuck, which is actually really good for what we're doing. If we wanted to curve this over, which is what we're trying to do here, that spontaneous tuck doesn't quite happen as much in the sandbag as it's doing already in this tire. So let's go ahead and hammer out that tuck. And we can use just, we can use the edge of the tire to do this. One downfall to this tire is it's not quite as heavy as the sandbag. That's, but we can always build something to clamp this to the table. So, as you can see, this panel is just a little bit smaller than what I would have used in this, what I should have used in this. This is a little big for this little panel right here. But you can already see the difference in stretching and in shrinking with this thing. So since we got those spontaneous tucks with the tire, and we weren't able to get those with the sandbag, We've got more curvature with the tire than we did with the sandbag. Which is really cool. So, let's try this. 
Here's a smaller tire, more of an appropriate size for this panel. And let's try stretching it in this one. So now that the panel's not wanting to fall inside that larger hole, I'm getting more stretch out of it and more spontaneous tucks. Look at that. So, Look at all the curvature we have in this panel already. Just by having some negative space in the center of this tool, you know, the difference is, is pretty crazy. So in order to get the sandbag panel to look like the tire panel, I would have to physically put some shrinks in this thing to get this end to curve over just to get it to look like what I did in this, you know, roughly about the same amount of time in the tire. Which is pretty cool, because these things are really cheap. I think I got that one for 10 bucks. And the other one was like maybe 15 or something like that. But, you know, compared to $60 for this. So another cool aspect about using the tire rather than the sandbag is when you physically put a tuck in the sheet metal for shrinking, that absence of space or that void within the tire helps hold that tuck in place as you're hammering it out. So I'll show you here on this tucking tool that I just built. The plans for this and builder kits are gonna be available on my website at bmetalfabricator.com. But let me just show you the process here. So let's go ahead and put a tuck. and then hammer this out in the tire. I built this little base for it real quick just to hold that tire in place while we do this. So let me show you. You can already see that it's keeping that spine right in the center of that tuck. And that's exactly what you want. As I'm hammering it, all this sheet metal is being crunched together and shrinking this part of the tuck. So you can see the spine right in the center. That spine right there lets me know that that tuck worked exactly like we wanted it to. And that's thanks to this void right here in the center. It'd be a lot more difficult to do that if we were doing it on the sandbag. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I'm inspiring you guys to think outside the box when it comes to metal fabrication. Simple tools and objects that you have laying around can easily be utilized to shape metal and fabricate. With that being said, thanks again for watching you guys. I appreciate all the support and until next time, we'll see you later.